This week, we want to make a different style of video to answer a few questions that we've been getting from viewers interested in renovating and buying chateaus themselves. Questions like, what should you consider when buying a chateau in France? What are the renovation costs? And where should you begin your search? My grandfather bought the chateau in 1981, and I spent every summer here with him. So I've seen different levels of stress, hard work, and joy that the chateau has brought him. And since his passing two years ago, it has become my responsibility to keep the chateau alive and hopefully leave it in better shape than when I inherited it. We've also met several other chateau owners in this local area who don't happen to be on YouTube. So we wanted to share a combination of all of our experiences with anyone who's interested in potentially buying or renovating a chateau. Chateaus were originally built as houses for lords and royalty, and there are over 45,000 chateaus throughout France, and over 10,000 of them were actually classified as historical monuments. So if you're looking to buy a chateau, then don't worry, because you have a few options available. In medieval times, they were built for protection, with moats, turrets, and drawbridges, but as time went on, they became more elaborate pieces of architecture. You can see the changes in design over the different eras, from the old medieval stone castles, kind of like you'd see in Winterfell, to these massive artistic displays of wealth and power, like the Chateau de Versailles, which if you haven't been there, you gotta see it. It's, it's amazing. Depending on the region, chateaus can have very different designs to accommodate for warmer and colder climates. When we visit the south of France, we've seen more open chateau designs with courtyards and gardens. In the north of France, you will likely see chateaus that are more enclosed with stone or stylized wood beams. In our region, which is near Paris, we see a lot of Renaissance chateaus with moats and outbuildings. You can probably find a variety of styles in each region, but the climate generally impacted the designs throughout France. We've seen so many different chateaus and each one feels unique. In fact, one of the most beautiful chateaus I've ever seen happened to only be slightly larger than an average American home but the unique architecture, the design, and the rooftop terrace had me falling in love with it. So sometimes you really have to see a chateau in person before you can truly appreciate what it has to offer. So try not to get caught up in a specific design or style before you actually see it. You'll want to consider if you have the finances to fully support living at a chateau or if it will require making a business out of it. Some people have the financial stability that allows for them to sustain life at a chateau and all the maintenance while other people go into it really for business purposes and others for a balance between the two. There are chateaus for all sizes of family as well as multiple families with multiple apartments or even wings. And depending on the business, some people really do both. I personally like looking at the origin story of a building and family and the generations that followed to understand the evolution and the architecture of the spaces. Of course, there isn't always a lot of documentation about those things, so sometimes you end up with some surprises and some are good and some not as good. Knowing your purpose will help you find your chateau that meets your needs. Make sure that the foundation is adaptable for your plans even if you don't plan on doing everything right away. It's very important for public venues since there are a lot of requirements that need to be met for like fire safety, handicap access, and sanitation. Some chateaus are at the end of an hour long dirt road or tippy top of a mountain or between two mountains and never gets any sunlight or like five hours away from any public transportation or airports, which might be heavenly for some people, but getting your groceries or getting your friends to come over or especially if you're a venue, getting people out there could be pretty problematic. I wouldn't recommend starting by looking at the prices, but rather I would recommend traveling to France to discover the different regions. There are chateaus all over, so make sure you love the region where you're beginning your search. There should be a range of chateau sizes and prices throughout the regions of France. And just to name a few beautiful regions, we have the French Alps, the French Riviera, we have Normandy, we have Provence, and of course, Paris. When I was growing up, my father was a house painter, so 
I spent every summer since I was 14 painting houses. And I worked on a few other home improvement jobs, so I have a little experience with this kind of work. But chateau renovation is a whole different beast. Depending on the level of degradation of your chateau, you can be looking at simple cosmetic repairs like repainting, or have to completely demolish walls or reinforce floors to resurrect the structure that used to be there. Be sure to have a trustworthy architect inspect the building before you decide to buy, so you have a realistic idea of what is possible with the chateau. Take this into account when mapping the overall cost in the chateau renovation. We always try to get a few different quotes when we're working on big chateau projects, like replacing the windows at the Hunter's Lodge or fixing the cracked beam here in the chateau and it helps that we've made friends with some of the local chateau owners because they can recommend us their contractors. And of course, we're very lucky to have Francis because he always knows how to guide us to local artisans. Unfortunately, we have had contractors unnecessarily charge us more for work simply because it's a chateau. So they assume we have a big budget. And we've also had contractors come in after a job was finished just to tell us that we were still overcharged for a previous job. Finding contractors you can trust will make a huge difference. Because every chateau is unique, they will each have their own unique problems. Depending on your style of stonework, framing, or roofing, you might have to find a specialist who is capable and willing to work on a specific job like that. France is also a country of specialty work, which means that your electrician won't do masonry, and your plumber won't touch the electricity, and so on. It's kind of less of a jack of all trades and a bit more of a Jean-Luc of one specific thing. Some chateaus still have original walls or ceilings that should be left as such. In some cases, it might be protected by French historical restrictions. We respect the originality and try to save it as much as possible. In our chateau, we have original fireplaces and ceilings that were identified by the professors at the School of the Louvre. So we try to protect the safety of those artworks when we host events or cinematography. More recently, we discovered there was a fungus growing on one of the wooden beams in our outbuildings, and because of that, we had to treat all of the wood in all of the buildings, which became yet another unexpected expense. If we'd never noticed that fungus growing, then it would have caused many more problems over time. So we cannot stress enough how important it is to have someone who is familiar with chateaus and knows what to expect. We try to do as much of the renovations ourselves or hire a professional who can teach us while they work on it so we can learn more about French buildings and materials. But we know our limits and we always think of safety first. Keep in mind that many of these chateaus have outdated electrical wiring that can be dangerous to work with or old paint that contains high levels of toxic lead. So if you plan to do it yourself, please check with professionals before tearing into walls and use protective gear. One thing's for sure, that whenever we finish a project or get something fixed, it feels very rewarding, and it always reassures us that we're making progress, slowly but surely. This chateau was abandoned for almost 10 years before my papi purchased it at auction. And within the first few years, he spent almost a million to fix the roof and then again to fix the floors and the upper levels. It made him realize that even though he had some substantial funds, he would not be able to sustain a retired chateau life without generating some sort of income for upkeep. I have a few friends now that have been able to take out loans to remodel, but financial planning is very difficult with the types of surprises we find. Also with fluctuations of prices and the time it takes to actually get things done. Basically, going over budget is pretty common, and unfortunately, things degrade at different speeds, so fluctuations tend to occur. Because of this, it is also very difficult to get accepted for loans with general banks in France. You usually have to know someone willing to vouch for you. You need to have financial backing through diversified income or enough savings to future-proof your future costs. Renovating everything at the same time is typically more cost effective, especially when looking at plumbing, electricity, and heating. But it's a really big cost up front, so be prepared. And don't forget your overhead costs. Heating is typically one of the biggest since all of our windows are single pane. The wood expands and retracts with the weather, leaving gaps under the doors. And there's typically little to no insulation with the big stone walls and thin slate tile roofing. Unfortunately, this is why a lot of chateaus are abandoned when inherited by a family or a foundation, because the market value of a maintained chateau is so high, it isn't until a few years of abandonment that the chateau becomes affordable again on the market.
You'll want to get familiar with your local mayor's office because all of your renovations will have to get approved by them. When my grandfather first bought the chateau, he put together an entire business plan to renovate the buildings and manicure the forest to create a resort like Club Med. It was for horse riding with a golf course, housing, and a spa. But the mayor's office denied his plans and instead announced that they were going to cut through the land and build a freeway, and he had to completely change his ideas. Recently, we decided to redo all the windows at the Hunter's Lodge because there's no insulation, and the plans are already with the mayor and we hope they get accepted. So be sure to understand that your renovations will require approvals and might have certain restrictions depending on your situation. If you're not a French citizen like me, then you get to enjoy the super easy process of obtaining a French visa. It's a walk in the park. On second thought, it's a complete nightmare. Um, it's anything but easy. The term, it takes a village, is very accurate. Some days we wake up to three separate crews working on different projects while we work on something else. Thankfully, we have lots of friends and family who come to visit, and when they do, they often help us with whatever we're working on at that time. If you decide to use your chateau as a venue for other business opportunities, then you might be surprised at what you can create. Our chateau has been used for cinematography and weddings over 30 years. This has allowed us to meet certain professionals that help guide us and grow our venue business and improve on our ideas. One of the perks is you get to meet wonderful people experiencing some of the most beautiful moments of their lives. And you also get lots of champagne and cake through the wedding season. We absolutely recommend that you buy and renovate a chateau if you have the opportunity. But please, first travel France, fall in love with the culture, the region, and then find the chateau of your dreams. In my grandfather's experience, if he could do it again, he probably would have chosen a smaller chateau that he could afford to live in without having to do business in his retirement. Of course, he was very grateful to be the steward of the chateau and create an established business out of it and write his own chapter in its very long history. We truly didn't believe that we'd be able to afford the chateau inheritance taxes, and all sentiment aside, the value of it, we could have probably purchased one or even two small chateaus. And although terrifying and stressful at times, overall it's a wonderful new life experience that we get to share here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Join us next weekend when we have Francis back to work on the Pigeonnier and the Chateau Bell Tower. And my father joins us for a visit from California with his partner and my baby sister. And we take them into Paris for the Christmas festivities. <laughs>